What's up, Wolfpack? Not here. Thanks for checking out this guide video. This video is going to be geared towards entry level streamers or streamers just getting started, but who want to up their level of production quality easily. Before we start, though, you know we've got a show pet. So make sure that you're posting pics of your pets in Discord, and maybe yours will get shown on the next week's guide video. So you've begun your streaming journey. You've got your broadcast software up and running, but you want to up your production value a bit. You see other streamers with these cool overlays and alerts and notifications and ways to interact with chat, and you want to be able to do that too. There are lots of different options out there for services to help you up your production quality. We're going to be talking about a bunch of them here on this channel, but today we're talking about Streamlabs. So what is Streamlabs? Streamlabs is a tool for streamers to increase the production value of their streams through the use of on-screen interactable media and alerts. This includes things like follow alerts, sub alerts, spinning wheels and other interactables, raid alerts, and more. A lot of products exist that allow you to do these things on your stream, but Streamlabs is the OG. They actually started in 2014 and used to be called Stream Alerts. Every streamer in the industry has an opinion on Streamlabs, but today we're just going to go over its features. Note, we will not be going over Streamlabs OBS today. This video is about how to incorporate Streamlabs into OBS Studio. Now, before we talk about alert boxes or emote walls or any other widgets you want to add to your stream, we need to talk about browser sources. Browser sources are the key to this whole process. They let you embed a website directly into your stream. There are a lot of ways to make your stream's production value jump dramatically by using a browser source. For example, adding tournament brackets to your stream adding instant replays of your epic kills, and of course, alerts. To add a browser source and enable all of that awesome capability on your stream, go to the plus under sources, add a browser source. After you add a new one, it's gonna pop up with this window here. You can see this URL spot here, that is where you paste in the URL for the website that you want to link. We'll go over how this works with Streamlabs later. But to demonstrate, this is what it looks like after you've set all of that up and somebody follows you. Getting started on Streamlabs is really easy. All you have to do is log in with your Twitch. Click log in, come to this page, log in with Twitch. Easy as that. Once you're on your Streamlabs dashboard, you can see all kinds of analytics and events that have happened on your stream. We're gonna go over to the left and click alert box. Like I said before, Streamlabs was originally called Stream Alerts. They were one of the first people to offer on-stream live interactable alerts for Twitch streamers. This was the backbone of their product. You can see your customizable options for every kind of alert you could want. Follows, subs, donos, hosts, bits, you name it. All you have to do is just make sure that it's enabled, pick the layout for your alert. What do you want the alert to say? Add an image or a GIF, add a sound effect, and choose how long and loud it's gonna be. If you really wanna dive deep into customization, you can also change a whole bunch of settings about the font, as well as make up different kinds of alert variations. For example, if somebody sends me bits over a thousand, meaning they donate over $10 to me, they get a special sound effect that uh, other people might not get. Just make sure that when you pick a GIF or a sound effect for your alert, that either you own the rights to that art slash sound, or you're using copyright free art and sound. However, Streamlabs does offer an entire collection of uh, free default ones. What you see right here is the widget URL. This is the key to the whole process. Remember that browser source thing I was talking about just a second ago? You remember that spot to paste in the URL? This is the URL you paste into your browser source. Just copy it, paste it into your browser source in OBS. Anytime somebody follows, you'll get an alert. Streamlabs actually has an entire collection of widgets that you can add to your stream. You can take your Twitch chat and embed it into your stream. You can have an event list of recent follows, subs, raids, or whatever else you would want to add to it. You can even make a wheel that you can add to your stream. It spins. For example, this is my scene in OBS that I use when I'm playing a game on stream. I've got my events right here. Bit and sub goals for the week up top. Dono goal down below. Looking a little sad right now. I also have an emote wall right here. Another thing Streamlabs does for you is that they can also manage your donations. Streamlabs does take a cut though, if you do choose to go through them for donations on your stream. Back on the Streamlabs dashboard, if you go all the way down to settings on the left, 
and then go to donation settings you can set up a PayPal people can pay you through as well as set up a bank account for people to pay you directly. In your donation history you can see the link that you'll need to use to advertise your donation page. I recommend copying that and then adding it into your panels underneath your stream. That way, as soon as somebody clicks on this picture that says tips, they're taken right to my donation page. If you want to be able to do that, just add the image you want to use for your tip panel and then copy the link in there. Some things you should know about Streamlabs as well. Streamlabs offers a lot of paid products that you can add to your stream too. If you want to pay for themes for your widgets, alerts, for stream overlays, you can do that. Do I recommend it? No. A lot of the stuff that you find on here, you can learn to make yourself for free using free software. But if you don't have the time and you have the extra income, then you see Logitech actually bought Streamlabs for $81 million back in 2019. Some of these monetization practices were in place before that, but they've become very, very heavily pushed by Streamlabs since they were bought out by Logitech. Logitech got to make back their money. At the end of the day, it's your stream. Customize it however you want it to look. If you find the perfect theme in Streamlabs, cool. But I highly recommend people check out tools like GIMP, HitFilm Express, DaVinci Resolve. These products will help you learn how to make your own art, make your own assets, and customize your stream even further because you're the one making that extra polish and flash. Can you spend money in Streamlabs on this stuff? Yes. Do I recommend it? No. And so my friends, that is Streamlabs. Like I said earlier on, every streamer who's been in the biz for a bit has an opinion on Streamlabs. However, whether a good opinion or a bad opinion, I don't think anybody can deny their impact on the industry as a whole. As always, it's best to form your own opinion. Streamlabs isn't the only alert service. Try out some other ones and see which one works best for you. And as always, it's best to just dive into it. The easiest way to learn a piece of software is to get hands on. So dig in, get creative, customize your stream and your alerts to fit your style. What do you guys think our next guide should be on? Leave it in the comments down below. I would love to hear your opinion. Don't forget to like and subscribe guys and I will see you guys in our next Wolfpack guide video. Oh, ow.